Lieutenant Commander Worf has been the mainstay of Star Trek for 15 years, but his career took a couple of hits along the way, so could he ever be a captain in Starfleet? Perhaps today is a good day to die! Hello everyone, my name is Captain Jack and welcome to Trek Central. This video will be taking a look at the iconic Klingon, Worf, portrayed by Michael Dorn, and if the reprimands on his record jeopardise his future in becoming a captain and therefore commanding his own starship. Let's look into Star Trek lore and find out a bit more about the character, his history, and if he can make it to having a place in the big chair. Hit it. Thanks to everyone who wrote in on our previous video on where is the Enterprise E, telling us about whether Worf could potentially be captain or not. So today, thanks to your sponsors, we're going to explore that possibility. Remember to leave your comments down below should you have an opinion on this video. During his tenure aboard the Federation flagship of the time, the USS Enterprise D, Worf endured a lot of persecution from almost every Klingon that he met, often being referred to as a Patak. His father, Moog, was disgraced by the rival House of Juras, with Worf and his brother Kern carrying the burden of this, along with the House of Moog also losing their honour. In 2367, Worf would lose his former mate, Kalar, Federation Ambassador of the Klingon Empire and mother of Worf's son, at the hand of Councillor Juras. This was an event that led to his first reprimand. Juras killed Kalar as she had vital information that he was a traitor to the Klingon Empire, and at the time was running against Gowron for Chancellorship. Worf took the opportunity to fight Juras, even though he was the only one who could have really cleared his family's name. Worf ultimately chose to beam aboard the IKS Vaughn to avenge his fallen mate. Once aboard, Worf challenged Juras under Klingon law and killed him via impaling him with his Batleth. While the right of vengeance was considered culturally acceptable by Klingon society, it is not legal by Federation law. And although Worf did so whilst in uniform, he removed his combat, signifying he was not acting as a Starfleet officer, but as a Klingon warrior. His performance up until this point had been exemplary, and though Worf acted within the boundaries of Klingon law and tradition, as far as the Klingon Empire was concerned, they considered the matter closed. Captain Jean-Luc Picard did not. He had hoped that Worf wouldn't throw away a promising career in Starfleet, but ultimately he had to place a form of reprimand on his record, marking Worf's career for the foreseeable future. Now it doesn't state the nature or severity of this reprimand or in what way it could hinder his progression, but consider this. Worf removed his comm badge before beaming over, meaning he must have had to override the transwarder to lock on the beam on an unmarked officer, probably from a site other than a transwarder pad to prevent being seen turning off internal alerts or an unauthorised use of a transporter, likely abusing his position as chief of security to do so. This act is a dereliction of duty by going AWOL. Had the Enterprise come under attack or been boarded at any point, it would have been during the unauthorised absence of a chief of security and tactical officer, who had already willingly put the ship and her crew at risk, when its primary duty is to keep them safe. This is assuming Worf was on duty at the time. Still, we know of a call of senior officers to report duty in such circumstances as being boarded would call for them and that he would need to be on duty. He's unlikely to be kicking back drinking prune juice after all. In 2371, five years after his reprimand, Worf is finally promoted to Lieutenant Commander, a day Captain Picard apparently knew would always come, under the charges of knowingly and willingly performing above and beyond his duty on countless occasions, and earning the admiration and respect of the entire crew. So again, the severity of the past reprimand and how it holds him back still remains unclear, this could be a way of addressing that his post-actions outweigh the past actions. Now following the destruction of the Enterprise D, Worf was requested to Deep Space Nine, under the command of Captain Benjamin Sisko, to deal with a few Klingons that the station was having trouble with. Following the events of DS9, Worf was still considering leaving Starfleet due to the loss of the Enterprise, which he loved dearly. Captain Sisko offered Worf a position as Strategic Operations Officer aboard Deep Space Nine, which Worf would accept. This would see the Lieutenant Commander transfer back to the Command Division of Starfleet. In 2374, in the midst of a Dominion War, Worf let his personal feelings cloud his better judgement. He and his wife, Jadzia Dax, were tasked with a mission of great importance in extracting Lazarian, a Cardassian double agent turned informant, who wished to defect. Worf faced the challenge of choosing to complete the mission to extract the defector or save his wife Jadzia, who had been injured and would die if he chose to see the mission through. In choosing to save his wife Jadzia, Lazarian, who could have helped bring about the end of the war, maybe not straight away but drastically sooner, was left behind and eventually killed by Dominion forces. While saving Jadzia was not a completely heartless decision, it did prolong the war efforts and by extension, cost the lives of countless other ships and their crews. I guess Worf never heard the Vulcan saying the needs of a many. The mission failure earned him a second reprimand from Captain Sisko, 
who believed it would prevent him from receiving his own command, but Worf had no regrets as he did save his wife. This decision ultimately cost him rising any further ranks inside Starfleet and put his career trajectory of eventually becoming a captain on hold. I would like to point out that back in 2370, Councillor Deanna Choi, holding the rank of Lieutenant Commander at the time, took the bridge officer's test and earned the rank of full commander. This test is not only determining an officer's ability to command a ship, but to prove the courage of having to send a subordinate to certain death for the greater good. Worf failed to demonstrate the ability to do this during the mission, although the circumstances were slightly different in that the officer in question was his wife. The bridge officer test is something that Worf had never been offered to an attempt, or even hinted at doing, during his time on DS9. Irrespective of this, Worf was commander of the USS Defiant on several occasions, acting as first officer for when Cisco commanded the Defiant, for which the bridge officer's test would be a prerequisite and, as stated before, a requirement to reach commander. Though it's worth noting, a first officer didn't have to be commander to be the first officer. One of his key missions as commander of the Defiant was the Battle of Sector 001 in 2373 the setting for Star Trek First Contact. He did order the command, prepare for ramming speed, meaning he was willing to sacrifice himself, the ship, and the crew in a last ditch to cause damage to the attacking Borg cube. So we know he's capable of thinking of the greater good, just apparently not when a loved one is involved. Needless to say, his tough little ship and the rest of the surviving fleet was saved by the new Federation flagship, the USS Enterprise E, where he joined and supported them as tactical. Tough little ship. Little. Despite his previous reprimands, one of which is given to him by the commanding officer he is named First Officer to, Captain Sisko, thus meaning he was still eligible to take command of the Defiant in Sisko's absence or incapacity. So this is out of necessity, or an oversight in writing, or a hint that he's being tested. It was towards the end of the Dominion War he comes to blows with Chancellor Gorn in the DS9's wardroom, taking off his comm badge once again to stand up to Garon's threat of killing him. He was able to kill the Chancellor, and Martok believed the torch would fall to Worf, but he chose to pass on the position and instead appoints Martok to be the new Chancellor of the Klingon Empire, affirmed by the acceptance from the other Klingons in attendance. At the end of the Dominion War, Worf is named Federation Ambassador to the Klingon Empire. An ambassador who'll go targ hunting with me! <laughs> Whilst he did have a couple of reprimands under his belt, which supposedly would have hindered his career towards a rank of captain, he still received his promotion to lieutenant commander and did switch to the command division. He commanded the Defiant on several missions, more to the point he was named ambassador to the Klingon Empire, so it would seem that Starfleet still trusts and values him in a position of such diplomatic importance, regardless of his past actions. Actions that they thought he could potentially do again, would greatly risk a newfound peace between the two factions, especially to one of such volatility. I believe it's still entirely within the realm of possibility that Worf could still become a captain in Starfleet. At the events of Star Trek Nemesis, he has reached the required time of service to have reached Commander, however that era of canon ends before we see him go any further. Now we could possibly theorise that Worf did indeed make Commander and therefore become the first officer of the USS Enterprise E. Following the ending of the feature film Star Trek Nemesis, we do see the Enterprise E's XO, William T. Riker, leave and be promoted to captain, leaving the first officer spot of the Enterprise E vacant. There was meant to be a first officer to take his place, but that was in a deleted scene and therefore not canon, so at the moment, the Enterprise E does not actually have a first officer, and therefore many of us theorise this could be Commander Worf. It does make perfect sense, and we've discussed that in previous videos, so go take a look at them. A recent Deep Space Nine documentary, What We Left Behind, did touch upon a theoretical Season 8, and if you haven't seen the documentary on our video covering this theoretical Season 8, do check it out, it's well worth a watch. Anyway, in this 8th season, Worf is still the Klingon ambassador of the Federation under the Chancellor Martok. However, Martok has named Worf as his successor, but lets Worf go on one final meetup with the former crew of Deep Space Nine, before he has to rise to his new position of Chancellor of the Klingon Empire. How this might play out in the rest of the season 8 of Deep Space Nine, we simply do not know, as he only broke what the first episode of that season would be. So it'd be pretty cool to see Worf as Chancellor of the Klingon Empire. To get a better idea of Worf's possible progression, we must head to the extended canon, which can, and will always be overridden by future TV series and films. Take note, Star Trek Picard is coming out next year and possibly could disrupt the entirety of the extended canon. In the novel, A Time for War, A Time for Peace, written in 2004, set after the events of Star Trek Nemesis, Worf decides he's not the right temperament to be an ambassador, 
Although the Federation present disagreed, she accepted his resignation and he appoints his son, Alexander, in his place. Admiral Ross reinstates Worf to his former rank of Lieutenant Commander and he's posted to First Officer under Captain William T. Riker of the USS Titan. The novel's Resistance, Before Dishonor, Q&A and The Greater Sum, all of which are set after Nemesis, Worf is serving as the acting First Officer aboard the Enterprise E in the wake of Data's death. He initially refused the position on a permanent basis as he felt he was undeserving after he abandoned the mission to extract Lazarian and saved his former wife Jadzia. After getting advice from Dr. Beverly Crusher, Worf accepted the position and was promoted to full commander. So perhaps he did take out Bridge Officer's tests after all. As mentioned in a previous video, link in the description, Data was revived in one of many ways and went on to be the captain of the Enterprise E by 2387, as seen in the comic book series Starship Countdown. There is no reference to Worf being his first officer, so when Captain Riker is suddenly promoted to Rear Admiral in 2385, Worf may have been chosen to succeed Riker and Worf transferred back to the Titan. However, this is unlikely as some books do contradict that. As these novels and comic books are vastly different, there is no sure way to know what Worf's position was intended to be during these events. Now Worf would also appear in the MMO Star Trek Online, he's still seen as an ambassador, but as the events of this game take place in 2409, it is entirely possible that he took the position once again after his time on the USS Titan and the USS Enterprise E. That would mean there's still many years for him to continue and explore to expand on the character. However, these events could and may well be ignored by the new Picard series and taken any other direction. Who knows? Actor Michael Dorn, who did play Worf, has stated that he's willing to return if the conditions are right. Hopefully they are, as it'd be an opportunity sorely missed, and I'd love to see Worf back on our screens. Yes, we're all wanting that Captain Worf series. Come on, we're missing out here. Now, a lot of things could have happened since we last saw Worf on our screens. He could be a first officer, he could still be an ambassador of the Klingon Empire, hell, he could even be Chancellor of the Klingon Empire. We simply do not know, and we'll have to wait and see. So that finishes on our video of could Worf be captain. Personally, I think it'd be great to see, or even if he was one, we'll have to wait and see till Picard comes out. Well, now we ask you, what do you think? Could Worf be a captain in Starfleet? Or where do you think he is now in the Star Trek universe? Let us know what you think down below in the comment section below. For more Star Trek lore, news, and other information, make sure to subscribe to Trek Central here on YouTube. You can also check out our brand new website, trekcentral.net, for full articles on the latest Star Trek news and discussion pieces surrounding some great bits of Star Trek lore. Don't forget, you can follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Oh, and come join our brand new Discord server to discuss Star Trek with all of us. We'd love to have you there. For now, I've been Captain Jack. Thank you for watching, and we'll catch you next time. Goodbye.